Give me a second. I just need to plug this in. Just a sec, we'll start soon. Uh, <laughs>
I'm sorry, I've lost the screen again. Well, there isn't any more. Okay. Let's just check if YouTube is still with us. Yes, beautiful. Today we're not going to lose YouTube. I hope. Let's talk about this. Okay, so um, I don't have that piece of paper here, but um, we... Um, we talked about arrays. Do you remember? I told you that this idea that when you pass an array to a method, this is yeah, it's up in English. Um, this is nice and clear on my screen, and it's not very clear on this one. Okay, but you can all see that's fine. So we talked about the fact that when we pass an array to a method. Um, public static void x. When we pass a, a, an array to a method, then uh, we're not really passing the value of the array. We're passing a pointer to the array. So the A is modified inside the method X, it's the original array that's modified. And uh, I don't know how it's going to slow, but perhaps it's always better to go slow, too slow and too fast. Um, I, I wanted to add one more thing, and that is that there is another um, circumstance under which this happens. Um, in fact, two. Well, two that we can now understand. The first thing is, uh, when you have multiple arrows that you assign to each other. So if we say, I want an, um, oh, okay. Um, if we say we want an array A that contains one, two, three, semicolon, what will Java do? It'll say, okay, I could want an array, so I must find a spot for the array somewhere. And it's only that one, little slot. I can't put one, two, and three in there. But this last part of the assignment says make a new array that contains one, two, and three. One, two, three. And have a point at that. So um, we kind of know about this now. If we do the same thing for B, int B, four, five, and six. Then Java will do the same thing. It'll find a slot for B. It'll make an array containing four, five, and six. <laughs> and seven. And it'll put a, a reference to that array inside B. So now that these two arrows. What happens if we say that um, uh, this is a little bit of pity, but uh, that's fine. What happens if we say that um, A0 is equal to B0? Can I do that? Where are my volunteers? Where's Adam? Um, you're not thinking about the other one, now you're wrong. Where's Adam? Oh. 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 I found you. Oh. Well, I want to think of you. Adam, uh, 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 who sits in front of you? Black shirt. What's your name? Kevin. 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 Like an olive. 
Hi, Marvin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. That's an interesting name. Kevin, um, can I do this? Why do you say that? <laughs> I can definitely write it, but is, what will Java say? I mean, it's important to be able to think about computers. We'll see, oh, this is an assignment. Okay, that's the first thing. Where am I going to assigning to? I want to put something in the first slot of A. So I'm putting something into the first slot of A. And what expression am I putting in that slot? Well, B0, so the first element of B. I can do that because B0 contains a 4, which is an integer. And A0, A is an integer array, uh, so it can store integers. So the effect of this assignment will be that um, A's first element becomes a 4. Clement, um, what about, uh, well, let's see, what about this? If I wanted to copy over all the values, is that illegal? Why? I cannot fault you on that. There are different sizes. If I weren't as clumsy, would have, um, I could have fooled you. What if they were the same size? What if the six wasn't there? Would it be legal then? I mean, there's no way we can put four values into three slots. That's clear. So this cannot possibly copy the values over from A to B. But in some sense, it does. Because um, if I'm talking about A and B, I'm not really talking about the arrays themselves. I'm talking about these references to arrays. So this will say, um, put inside A, which is that pointer place, the value of B, which is that pointer. Can I do that? A is supposed to reference an integer array, and this is definitely one. And B is also supposed to uh, reference an integer array. So the types are the same. A and B have the same type. And this is their type, and it's the same, so I can do the assignment. And the effect will be that the value of B, which is referencing this array, will now be stored in A. So both A and B will point to this array. And if I now say B1 is equal to A2, so I will say, OK, this is an assignment. I want to put something in the second slot of B. So B1 is the slot where the 5 is. What do I want to put in that slot? The value of this expression. This expression is A3, the third element of A. So A is an array, it's actually this array. It's 1, 2, 3, third element is 7. So this is equal to 7, and I'm putting a 7 into the second slot. This is 7. So I'm putting a 7 into the second slot of B. But now, both A1 and B1 are equal to 7. Because A1 and B, A and B point to the same array. And when I manipulate the array using A, um, and I like to check the array using B, both of them can see this one error. So they're working on the same object. And this is not hard stuff. All we need to know is that A and B themselves are not the arrays. They just use store a reference to the array. Are you okay with that, Clara? Excellent. So this is the first thing, and uh, as you can imagine, uh, some excellent questions for a test. It's not that I want to confuse you, but if you really understand how this works, then you can answer questions about it in the test. Speaking of the test, I got an email yesterday from Sunburn that I set up the Sunburn site. So I'll upload the mark, all the marks I have, all the marks um, today. Not exactly immediately after this class, but as soon as I can. Okay, let's just talk about one more thing, which is in the same vein, um, but not exactly. Um, I 
Okay. Let's look at this declaration. Uh, is this a string variable that can let the string hello world? Now, um, we haven't really worked with strings much, a little but not too much. But you'd think that one obvious representation for a string is an array of characters. And strings are not like integers, they only store one thing, they store a whole long piece of data. And that piece of data doesn't always have to be the same length. And with an integer, we know that we always store, let's say, 32 bits, and it's kind of fixed. But, but with an array, if I store a whole novel in a string, then that's more than 32 bits, that's a lot of bits. And uh, strings are fundamentally different from integers, but they're a lot like arrows, because we could think of this as an array of characters. We could think of this as an array that contains H, E, L, L, O, and so on. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is that we don't know our strings, strings are represented inside, internally inside JavaScript. It's not necessarily as an error, but it could be. But we don't know, you don't know, I may know, but I'm not telling you. Uh, for us, strings are black boxes. They're a type provided by Java that we can use and manipulate, um, and we don't have to know what they are like on the inside. But they are, what we do need to know is that they are similar to arrays in the sense that when I say string s, Java says, oh, Yaku wants to declare a string, so I'll find a slot somewhere called s, and inside that slot I'm going to store a reference to the actual string. So s is really just a pointer to that string. And, um, this means that I can do the same thing I did before when I was assigning one string to another, or one array to another. I can make a second string t, and I can just say it's equal to s. So with this, this declaration, Java will find a slot somewhere, and t will be that same string. And now, if we apply all the things we know about arrays, if I modify s, that will be reflected in t. But this statement is false, because strings have a very special property in Java. They cannot be changed. You can never change a string. This thing, Hello World, will forever and always, while my program is running at least, just contain Hello World. There's no way I can change it so that it says Mellow World or anything like that. It has to be fixed. And when I manipulate strings in Java, I'm really all the time creating new strings. So look at this little program. String A is X, X. And string B is Y, Y. If I say A becomes A plus B, and I can do that, we've seen this before, that you can concatenate two strings, A and B will be concatenated, and I'll store the result of A. The way Java handles this is by not changing A at all, or the string that A points to. Um, it just makes a whole new string. So after this declaration, A is pointing somewhere to what we represent as a little array, but it's not really. So after that declaration, A will be pointing there. I'll have a variable A that points there. And after this declaration, I'll have a B variable that points to Y, Y. And now Java comes to this third statement, which is an assignment. I want to put something in A. A is on the left-hand side. So it's this A that I want to modify. I want to put something in here. And I'm putting this expression in there. So it's concatenation of A and B. So Java will look at A and says, oh, that's XX, and y, B is YY. So make a new string, 
that is the concatenation of uh, X and A and B, and replace A, or the reference of A, with the reference to this new string. So it will find memory somewhere to construct a new string, and it will make A reference that new memory a new string. One important question, what happens to the old memory? I mean, this memory, which contains XX, it's in some sense now gone. Um, okay. First answer is that Java will collect that memory and reuse it for something else. From time to time, when your program is Java looks through all its memory and sees, oh, I've got an XX that's no longer used. So I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to discard this. I'm going to reclaim this memory, and when Yaku makes the next declaration, I could perhaps reuse that memory. And this is called garbage collection. Uh, collection. So from time to time, it goes through its memory and finds all the garbage and collects it. The XX is no longer used. This is an entirely different string, an entirely different place of memory. So, at XX, that string has been collected. This is only partly true, because as it happens, this particular string will never be collected. We might as well hear the whole story. Uh, because of my program, I wrote XX directly in my program. Uh, XX will never be collected. I will say, oh, it's part of the constant string pool. I'm not going to touch those strings because they're inside the program. Being referenced inside the program. But XXYY is not, doesn't appear anywhere in my program. It's not a constant string that, I'm used, that I used to write my code. So XXYY is definitely a candidate for connection. If my next statement were A is ZZ, then Java will, in fact, even before your program starts executing, Java would have made some memory that contains ZZ. And it will change A to point to ZZ. So XX is still floating around, and perhaps in the future we'll be using it again in our program. YY is still being used because B is pointing to it. B is referencing YY. Um, ZZ also appears in the program, so that is also locked. That's a little lock. And it won't be garbage collected. I can't reuse this one. But XXYY is a string that doesn't appear in my program. Even though I may in the future construct it again, Java will say, oh, well, this can be garbage collected. If no one is using it any longer, I can reuse this memory. This memory. So um, garbage collection is a funny thing, but um, it's critical to the way Java operates. In other languages like C and uh, many others that you don't, haven't heard of, um, you have to, the programmer has to do this themselves. So that you have to say, uh, okay, um, this XXYY, I'm no longer going to use it. So I've got to tell the computer that this memory can go back to be reused. And you have to do it manually. And there are horrendous errors that happen because people forget to release the memory that the program used and is no longer using. So that you have memory leaks. As the program runs, the memory runs out. There's less and less available memory because the programmer neglected or made some kind of mistake and old memory is never reclaimed. So if you're using C, you have to do that manually. If you're using Java, it just happens automatically in the background. And the downside is that um, now the computer has to spend some of its time um, figuring out what pieces of memory are available and that can wait some. That's fine because the garbage collection goes so fast that it's not an issue for us. Many modern languages have garbage collection. Almost, in fact, almost all modern languages have garbage collection. In some sense, we've settled on it as the, the solution. Okay, one more tiny little thing. Um, to finish off this story, I can pass a string to a method. And it can manipulate the string, but we must bear in mind that it can never ever 
You can use the string to make a new string, concatenate it with something else, or perform other operations on that string. But whatever we do, strings cannot be modified. In Java, you can only allocate some memory for a string, put it inside the memory, and then it's fixed. You can't ever change the actual string. Um, right. So let's talk about this and one more thing. In the test, we had public. Uh, I'm a tiny little bit tired of writing because, um, well, because, because. Let's just see if the internet is still going. That's excellent. Right. Let's go into clips. So um, in the test, we had this little example. And as we call it, we had this example that um, we had to implement a method called increment. It increments all the entries in an array. And it sent back a new array as a result. And then I tried to show you that I can actually modify, I don't have to return a new array. I can modify old array in this routine. And because Java sent over the reference, I'm, when I'm working with old array inside routine increment, inside methods function increment, I'm actually working with the original X. Any modification I make to old array will be reflected in X because they're pointing to the same thing, uh, referencing the same real array. So that uh, let's have it work today because if you remember yesterday, this system was a little stuffed up. But um, let's just see if we can um, it right today. So I'm going to write increment two. It's not going to send back an array. It's not going to allocate a new array. All it'll do is it'll say old array i is old array i plus one, and it won't be returning a new array. And down here, I'll call increment. I remember correctly you know, a bit of an issue with seeing the difference. So um, increment two, five x. Okay, that seems fine. So I'm going to save that. Please eclipse, don't break. And I'm going to try to run it. Run example two. Okay, run. Uh, okay, fine. Good. So this is example two that just ran. Um, on Monday, I didn't have a slide, so it was difficult to see the two values of x. Uh, x starts with 25, 66, 77, 33, 42. And after the increment of two call, all the values have been incremented by one. So I modified all array and that modified x in the, in the main program. Priyanka, do you understand this? You look very suspicious. I mean, not suspicious, sus suspecting. <laughs> Skeptical, that's what I mean. Um, but I promise you, this is how it works. But there's one issue with this program that I can ask in the test that we should learn about. And that is that um, I passed this size parameter to increment two. But ideally, I don't want to do that. And luckily, Java has a mechanism for me to not have to pass the size. I'm going to write increment three. It's not going to take a size parameter. Now we have an issue because we need to iterate over the whole array and we don't know what its size is. But Java has a built-in facility where I can tell the size of an array by writing the array name and dot length. So we don't even need to specify the size of old array. Any array requires to pass to increment three, it will iterate over and increment all of its elements. If I can call iterate three without having to tell the method that the size of the um, array is five. Increment three doesn't need to be told that it's five. Let's save that. And we run to make sure it's correct. Okay. So uh, there is a dot length keyword that you can attach to arrows. Uh, 
I'm, get, I'm getting to my point soon. So here we go. Um, make a new class. Example two. And in example two, even though it's in package array passing, I know it's a little wrong, but um, I want to just show you an example of a string that I'm passing over. So um, show length of A, B, C, D, E. I'm calling method show length, so I have to implement that. And I guess I can do that. This is private. I want to do So now I'm passing a string to method show them. I want to tell them. So ideally, I would like to do something that as the same thing I did for arrays. I would like to say sys out. Oh no, no uh, String dot length. As you can see, Java doesn't allow that. Strings and arrays are not the same thing. So Java has these primitives like int and float. Bubble, long, char, boolean, that are absolutely built in. And they are first class citizens. Then it has these things, <coughs> sorry. Then it has these things, these things called arrays, which are mm, almost built in. It's definitely part of the language, but they behave a little differently. So they work with these references. An array and a string, but an array specifically, consists of these pointers, these references to other um, pieces of memory. So that's a little different from the built-in types. And um, strings work almost the same way, but not exactly. So this definitely shows us that once the string is, uh, the screen falls going to fall soon. So um, strings are not arrays because I can't say string for example. Strings are really objects, and you'll only be learning more about objects in the second part of the year, but um, we need them now because um, when we're talking about objects, we are talking about other methods. So a string, each instance of a string, each actual string, has a lot of different functions we can call on that string. So one of them is length, but it's a function, so I need to supply Parentheses. I'm now calling the length function for this particular string. It's important that we don't know the distinction between strings and the functions I can call on strings and arrays. So I can't call this array value dot length with parentheses because length is not a function in this array. Arrays are different. They don't have functions. They're not an object like the string is an object. In fact, string is the only, almost the only object we know. But arrays do have a dot length notation where you can find the length of the array. So arrays we only write dot length. When it comes to strings, we write length and parentheses, because it's a method like any other method. Um, let's just see if this works. Let's just also call show size. I'm going to new int array containing the values 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So um, that's 6, and this is 7. So this program should print a 6 and then a 7. Uh, let's hope that it does. Okay, excellent. So six and seven. The length of that string A B C D E F is six. This the length of that array has seven elements. Okay. Now, next thing to learn is that strings have many different methods I can call on a string. It's not only length. I can do lots of things with a string. So, for example. Um, I can, uh, my mistake, string stuff, stuff, uh, area 114. 
and I'm going to make my function Google string start, and it takes a string. So what kind of method can we call on the string? Well, if you ever face, at least in Eclipse, it's always easy to ask for auto-completion. So if you, at the end, you press control space, and you get a list of all the functions that I can call on this, on this string. Uh, somewhere in this list should be length. There it is. And there's Eclipse gives me another explanation that says uh, this method returns the length of the string. The length is equal to the number of oh, stuff, characters in the string. It says Unicode code units, but that's just fancy way of saying characters. But there are all these other fantastic functions, so let's try to use some of them. Uh, let's start at the top. Char at. I can ask for a specific character and a specific position in the string. So if I'm passing area 114, let's, um, let's look at char at 4. And I'm going to store that. What does it send back? It's like char, okay, so I'm going to store that in the char variable like so, and then I'm going to just write the char. Okay, so my program total uh, will print 6 and 7 because I'm calling show length and show size. And then when we string stuff, which will print the fifth character of every 114, which we hope will be at 4. So let's just see if that works. Excellent. So it's printing at four. Right. What else can we do? Um, let's um, let's see if we can write a little routine that will reverse a string. I want to write a little routine that will reverse a string. So I'm going to say. Uh, string R is reverse of it's the reverse of race car. No, that, that race cars. So I have to implement function reverse public static, and it's going to send back a string which will be the reverse, and it takes some string as an input. Okay. How am I going to do this? Any suggestions? Is it sexy? No, you don't have ball. <laughs> what? Oh. Ball. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Ball, oh, that's even your real name. <laughs> Any ideas? I need your help, Paul. What is after? You see, we can from after. What is after? Ooh. Waarom zeven? Waarom Waarom van is die string langer dan zeven of korter? Oké. Dat kan werk uit quite well. Wat we gedaan het? Kom eens gesteld, het kan magically after the ball. Je wilt van achter af beginnen en dan van die. Ja, oké, het begint af en dan voor die wat doen ons. Okay, I I I saw you all the things here. I saw yourself you say what after is. Um after is circular the string so length the function. Well, my answer is for what what do we do inside? What do we spend that kind? Okay, string, okay, string, yes. Of plain string. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> Damn. Damn. Just give me a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul. The kid of our daughter, Joe, and the brand, and all of the fillers, the kid of our fillers, of my body, and you really used to be heard. But I think it's in the office of our fillers. I think you really don't find it. It goes with the office of our fillers. Yeah, yeah. Three of us to the back. of the string to the I think you're from Apple to reverse. But do you? Okay, but do you? I they say, but then after you come to it. The speak friend is all right, but what do you get done? As you pass on, oh, this friend is near. What's it here? Well, he all the capacity. He has to ask him and put him off and he has to ask him. So, if I'm the rock of the rock, I don't do it all. So, if I'm the rock of the rock, I'm going to ask him and he's scrying on a deer. Okay? He's going to ask him a deer scrying on a dog. So, um, come on, um, sit it goodbye, but all the desert is here. As you know, it can fall. I keep on my ears on my problem, but I can't even imagine what you will do. Ons het vanaf, ons begin van achter, en ons werk voor en toe, so ons begin by string dat rent, en dit een, maar die ene is is met die laaste karakter van string, want hy is rent vlak, so as hy die karakter, soos karakter 0, karakter 1, karakter 2, en dat hy die rent minus 1, ok, en, terwijl ek ons mees is met ene van die positieve karakter, en sluit hem in 0, doen hem iets, en ek trek ook daar, maak hy die in hande, ek denk om die ene hande, maar, so I can find the IF char of string, but what do I do with ch, that char? What do I, you said write it down. Yeah, that's the same thing, it's right in here. But what is it in Java then? Before you down, Paul. Well, I scrape it here, it's in Psalm, I scrape it to be scattered. Sê nie saam met my. Wat gaan dit doen? Ok, great. Maar dit is nie wat ons wil heen nie, nee. Want hierdie routine het beloof om een string terug te stuur. Wat? Sê goed hier? Ok, great. Dus een klein stapje in die rechte richting. Dit is soos om een klein stapje in die geel pad in die maand te doen. Dit is nie die rechte richting, maar dit is baie een klein stapje. Die maand is een baie ver. Dit gaan net die karakters op die skerm toe toe, dit is in die saal. En wat gaan ons terugstuur? Wat? Wat was hier als een fout? Wat jy moet in die skuil en fix, jy probeer nie dinge raai, kyk nog wat iets is wat werk. Dit is nie die rechte manier om vir werk te gaan om probleem op te los. Dit is een beetje meer systematisch hier. Kom ons begin eerst met die ding wat die keer te sê meer. Yes. Dit is een job. Dit is een job, dit is nie een string. Dit is die eerste probleem. Maar selfs al was het een string. En ek kan die string maak. 
Stanı problemi de ister. Çe stanı yenzirme. Çe stan net böyle bir form. The scope of çe is only that form. And return çe is outside the form. So for it çe does not exist. In the same way that I does not exist. Look, I mean I can change this to char. This function will send back a char. But Java is still complaining because it doesn't know what chip is. In this for loop in the chip disappear. In the same way that I disappear, I can't change this to int and return I because at, that, at this point where the return happens, I does not exist anymore. I only lives inside the for loop. But I, I'll have to do something else. And uh, since time is almost up, I'm gonna, just going to tell you what I think you should do, Paul. I think you should build up a new string that is the reverse. We're not going to be able to modify string. I said that before. So whatever we do to string, it'll stay what it is, and it'll stay forwards. So I need a second string that will be the where I'll construct the reverse of, uh, of string. So I'm going to make a second string here. I'm going to change this back to string. And I'm going to call it reversed. And initially, I'm going to make it empty. And then, I'm going to say add to to reverse. Don't bother printing it. And return reversed. So, I declare a new string that's going to contain the reverse of the input string string. In some way, I'm going to add ch to that uh, reverse string. And when I'm done with this for loop, I'm going to send back reverse. And I can send back reverse, I can see it here, because it was not, it's not limited to the for loop. I declared reverse inside this whole method, so I can see it from here. Paul, do you understand? Send me solve. Nice call. Super people. Well, that was a real Double point, double point. Prati hiervan. Is it? Is it? That's what you plan. Okay. So, well, I must write something first. I must write something first. So, I must write something first. Nou, het is nog steeds hier die probleem, Paul. Um, ons moet hier so op een of andere manier vir tje by reverse sit. Maar, ek toch het sê, ek het vroeg gesê, jy kan jy sring verander doen. So, hoe gaan ons reverse verander? Hoe gaan ons iets verander sit? Is ons nie aan hoe kan verander doen? Klemmen? You guys look absolutely horrified by this, what I thought would be trivial exercise. Okay, our time is almost up, so I'm going to show you the solution. Um, I'm not going to put anything, I'm not going to change reversed. I'm going to replace it entirely. I'm going to say reverse is equal to reversed plus show. So I make a new string. That is the concatenation of reversed and ch appended to it. So this will become a new string. And I put a, that reference in the reverse. Yes. Um, there's a nicer way, but not a shorter one. Who knows? Perhaps there is. But this, this, no, there isn't really. Not, not if this is what you want to do. Yes, there is. No, not shorter, but more beautiful. One thing I would ask, um, this is such a great exam question, but I won't ask it. I'll just show you that it may be a little more elegant to say, to go forwards. Not an array, it's a function. And now, I'm look, working forwards, and for each character, I just add it to the end of reverse. So that means that reverse will contain exactly the same string that I started with. I shouldn't be appending the characters as I walk from the front. I should really be prepending them. So 
if I have apple and I start with an A and I prepend it to the empty string, I get the string A. Then comes the P and I prepend it to my result string at the moment is A. So I prepend, I get par. Then I find the next P and I get the par. And I find the L and I get lipol, not lipol, lipar. And then I come to the E and I prepend that, prepend that and I get EL PPA. So prepending will reverse the string. Let's just see if what I'm saying is true and then we can go home. Oh. So race cars reverse is race car, race car. So that's what we expect. Okay. Which is a bad example because it's almost the same. Let's just try Apple. Elpa. I was supposed to talk about graphics, and I will talk about graphics uh, when you come back from recess, but I think this stuff is equally important. Um, we need to understand this idea that uh, I can pass arrays, but I'm really only passing a reference to an array. I can pass strings, I'm really only passing a reference to a string. An array has this one facility that I can get its length by calling or saying array.length and string has a lot of different functions that I can call but they're functions which means I must always apply the parentheses okay I'm going to stop now and I'll see you in uh, two weeks time minus two days oh no Yeah, I know. It's on the schedule, it must happen. <laughs>